welcome back to another RC Works video. Today we're just going to quickly brief uh, you about float valves or ball float control valves or whatever you want to call them. Um, basically these valves are very useful in reservoir or cistern applications where you don't necessarily want to run electrical all the way to the cistern and uh, operate it off of a typical like control float. Um, a lot of people, even a couple people this week that I've spoken to, kind of were oblivious to the fact that these things exist and they're an excellent solution uh, to minimize cost on a reservoir or cistern system. Uh, one common application or one situation people find themselves in quite a bit is maybe they've got a low producing well or something along those lines and or they just want to have backup water so they'll pump water way up a hill put a cistern in up there and it may be a few hundred feet a thousand feet away and then they're just going to gravity back down to pressurize the house so if a power outage happens or something along those lines uh, they're still going to have water at pressure to run the things in their house so it's a great idea um, but if you got to run electrical all the way up to it then you're just adding more components that may not be entirely necessary um, or at least this gives you another option of something to consider in those situations because it's an old technology it's the same way that your toilet works every time you flush the toilet the contents of the uh, the bowl or the back of the toilet portion. I'm not a plumber, so. Um, but anyways, the contents of the, the back of the toilet go into the bowl. It swirls around and washes the toilet out. Uh, and then the, the, there's a float in there that operates just the same way that this one I've got drawn here. So when the water level drops, the float goes down and then it opens up this valve and allows water to flow in and fill that tank back up which this is a float, so it's gonna float and rise back up, as you can see here, to the maximum position before it closes this valve off completely and eliminates the inflowing water by closing that valve off. No electronic components, nothing required. So let's take a closer look at a float valve, get our hands on it, and then also we'll talk about some of the capabilities and capacities of different float valves. Okay, so we've got a little float valve set up here. Um, now the nice thing about these is they're pretty adjustable, but when we go up, you can see that this section here is actuating the actual valve itself, and we'll get a close up of that. Uh, so the nice thing about these is that they're adjustable. So you can adjust the pivot point. This can actually be loosened. So if you needed to loosen it, you can set your float to wherever you want it to be. If you want it to be straight down to do something funky like that or, or depending on how you're orienting your valve itself, uh, you've got a lot of options. So depending on how you want to orient that valve, whether it's installed in some funky fashion, um, it gives you some choices. And that's pretty typical with these types of valves. But this is your most con common configuration. You're coming in here, and then it's dropping into your tank from here, off, on. And you can actually see, like, if you had a pretty large tank, you would have a good volume of water. All right, so the key factors on these valves is obviously what pressure you, you're going to operate on and um, then what comes into play is the size of the ball and the length of the rod. So just to give you an example, this one here, it's a six inch ball with a roughly 12 inch rod. So this will actually hold back almost uh, in the ballpark of 90 PSI, which is gonna be fine for pretty much any application you're gonna be dealing with. Um, but you can get balls up to 12 inches in diameter or so. Um, they can work on much larger pipes, so for higher volume scenarios. Um, and they have some of these that are rated to go up to about 160 PSI. So lots of different options. You can uh, go with a smaller ball or a shorter stem, kind of a combination of the two, to decrease the pressure required to control the valve. But typically, you want to stick with an 11 or 12 inch stem um, because that's going to give you the best leverage over the, over the movement of the valve. So let's take a look inside. So here's the inside view of the uh, flow valve. And you can kind of see from down here too. Open and closed, open, closed, open. So with something like this, I mean, it's going to last forever. 
you're never hardly going to have to replace these. They're, they're very reliable. Um, and that's one of the bigger benefits to these things. All right, so if you're sizing up a reservoir system or find yourself in a situation where you need a float valve, give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help you, give you some advice there. Um, that's all we got for you today. Thanks for joining us, and uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll catch you next time.